Okay, I can hear you fine. What's going on, Michael? All right. All right. Hey, thanks for joining me. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So this is our 12th training, and I was mentioning before you got on, John, um, that we were having, we had you slated later in the month, so I appreciate your flexibility. Uh, of course. Dustin Black. Uh, John is a, a lender with um, guaranteed rate uh, and uh, top lender in the country, does tons of deals, and a high-character guy, creative guy, aggressive. And uh, I wanted to have John on today to bring a different perspective uh, to things because, John, we've had on CEOs of REMAX, Keller Williams, Cobalt Banker, we've had on the top uh, uh, real estate board in the United States, uh, Teresa Kenny, Miami Association of Realtors, uh, top MLS uh, CEO. And we're trying to get different perspectives and bring value during this unprecedented time. I have friends watching that aren't in real estate. I have people selling homes. I got people from Mexico and various countries that, that uh, chime in. So, um, you know, although you're talking about lending and your license in, in, in many states, we're excited to, to have you on just to kind of get a different perspective. So tell us, everybody, a little bit about you, how long you've been uh, in the mortgage business, and a little bit about uh, guaranteed rate, and give a little background, if you want mind. So I've been in this business for about, uh, just around, just over 20 years. Mike, you've been around the same, right? Yeah, 20 years. This is my 20th yeah. year. So we've seen everything. Um, so, you know, I, I've been, been doing this for about 20 years. I started off in a bank um, when I first got into business. Um, and, and bank was great for me for the, the training aspect of it, uh, kind of getting to know how that part of it worked. Now, when you go to smaller companies or mid-sized companies, they don't get the training like a bank would. But I was kind of handcuffed to where I was with that. So then I went to a broker, which was still a, a nice change to kind of see how that world worked. But kind of lost some, I kind of lost some power in regards to uh, where my files were going and, and how they're being handled. Um, so then as, as you progress through your, your work career, you find out what's going to work best and be best for your clients. And I went to the banking side, right? So uh, banking side is what I, uh, what I, what I, what I've really been with for quite some time now for about uh, 12, no, 14 years right now on the banking side. Okay. The banking side, what's great about that is, you know, especially me, because I do about, I do between 120 and 170, right around $170 million of business myself a year. Um, so that it, my company gives me my own underwriting, my own processing, um, and my own closing, um, and my own marketing team, which I think Andrew's on this call too. Um, and what, what that does, it just makes everything that much easier. So on the banking side, I get to take in those files, any file that I get, I'll structure them accordingly for what the best product or rate's going to be, and program for, my, for our clients. And then it's underwritten right in my office by my own two underwriters. So it's nice because I don't lose any power. That. I, close, I can close a loan right now, even in this epidemic we're in, in 10 days if I needed to. Yeah. So it just makes things a lot easier. That's non jumbo. Jumbo, we're, you know, we're a little bit different ballgame, which we'll go into later, I'm sure. Yeah. So t t talk to me from a definition standpoint. I know every uh, region and state might be different, but how right. do you define jumbo here in Illinois, for example? So in Illinois, we're at 510, 400 for the loan amount. Um, well, that's gone up dramatically. Unlike, you know, that's kind of what's cool. I know we touched on this a little bit. So five hundred and ten thousand or above, if somebody gets a single mortgage, that that's considered what they call a jumbo mortgage. Non-conforming correct? loan, correct. And the reason why it's considered non-conforming and why they'll have stricter guidelines now than they did, even before then, they still had where everything was turned along, is because what a non-conventional, now warrantable means. You guys have heard of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So anything that's five, ten, four hundred or below is a conventional loan. At that level, that's a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac warrantable loan, meaning that that can be sold on the secondary market. So when you have those loans, you see your paper being sold. Um, that's why they're a lot more flexible in those because they can be sold off to other 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 banks for um, they can sell off their mortgage, but mortgage backs to make some money. Um, on a jumbo loan, the bank that's running that loan is going to hold on to that loan, so it can't be sold off. So they're stuck with that. If it's a bad loan, they got to eat it. So that's why they, they definitely make those a little more strict. Oh, that's see, I just learned something right there. So thank you. So right now I have a potential client that is interested in a multi-million dollar property. He's looking at a jumbo loan and he was approved uh, with uh, for 5 million with the previous lender pre COVID-19 and things have right. changed. So that's part of why I wanted to have you on is talking about, you know, we're talking about change. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, firsthand from you, how you've yep. seen change as far as whether it be refi, whether it be purchase, 
Um, you know, I just refinanced and, uh, you know, they called me several times to verify up until the last yeah. moment that I didn't, you know, not only I still had my job, but that I haven't seen a substantial change in, in um, my, my income based on COVID-19. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what changes you're seeing over the last 45, 60 days because of, um, you know, COVID-19. Okay. So, um, first, which, you know, you talked about the verification employment. That's important. I'll get that in a second. But, you know, bu business-wise, it's definitely, I'm sure you've seen it too, Mike. I know it because we work together. It's it's definitely busy. I mean, I, the pre-approval part of it, we've been, we've been cranking along. So, that I was, I was scared for how that was going to turn out the way that it did in 2008. It, it's not. I mean, it's not that way at all. I think just because the market now, compared to where we were in 2008, was booming um, here now during this time, the rates were insanely low. I mean, are insanely low, and they, they weren't back then. So that's definitely, I think, gotten people's appetite to get out there knowing that we're going to get through this eventually. Um, so the people that I see out there buying are truly buying. They're not shopping around. They're buying homes. So that, that's oh, let, definitely let me, changed. Let, let me interrupt you right there. So yeah. first off, John hit a nail on the head on a question I was going to ask later in the show, but because you, you, you touched upon that, you know, one of the questions I have been asking guests is in your professional opinion, you know, during this, I, I use the quote downturn, but during this unprecedented time that we're in with so many people being laid off and in unemployment, how do you feel like today, 2020 is different than 2008? And you just answered that. So you basically, in your opinion, rates are more competitive today than they were in eight, 2008 going into that downturn and yep. the market was stronger. In other words, more home sales, yep. uh, you know, m more homes moving than 2008. Is that correct? It is correct. And then the scare of the mortgage part's not there too on top of that. So, you know, you've got, you know, lending was pretty much in control. Like we, we put all our guidelines on that we've learned from the, from the past and the crisis of 2008. So, you know, that, that's making things easier too, because we're not dealing with that as much. Yeah, we have changes, 100%. We have changes that we have to have um, for this, but lending itself, there, there was no, no, there was no, no doc loans. There's no subprime loans, bro. There's nothing like that goofy that would spook the markets on the mortgage side. Mm -hmm. So that's why at least that fear, for the most part, is taken out. There's some stuff that's still obviously there, um, you know, with that, that's on the higher level side, the executive side that they have to deal with, but they're handling it. The banks that are strong have had some good assets. They're they're, they're moving along just fine. That's awesome. Well, before I ask your next question, again, uh, folks, ch ch chime in. We got a lot of people watching on our Facebook live stream, and we have some people on the Zoom. Chime in where you're from. And again, if you guys get information from this, this is our 12th training. Uh, please don't keep it a secret. Let other people know. Hit a like, hit a, hit a love, leave us some, um, some feedback. Um, if you have questions on the mortgage side of things, please chime in. I'll be checking them. My assistant will shoot me a, a text with questions that come in. Um, again, we got John Nolden uh, from Guaranteed Rate on today's Luxury Lunch and Learn. On Friday of this week, as I mentioned previously, John Cheplak and some other guests. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same time, same place. And we record these, so in case you miss one, you can go back uh, and check it out. Where can you see the recordings? You can see the recordings on our Facebook group, which is free. Uh, Facebook, it's our group, Luxury Listing Specialist. And let's get right back to you, John, then. Sure. So so I, I interrupted. I wanted to really talk about the difference yeah. of 2008 yeah. versus today because that was yep. some really good points you had there. What else were you going to say? So, you know, in regards to, you know, social distancing is obviously something that's really important right now um, that you know, is obviously the big talk for what we do for a living. We're, we're around people. So, you know, guaranteed rate. Uh, we've, we've been pretty virtual, uh, pretty strong virtual before this happened, which helped us a lot for this, thank God. Uh, but, you know, I, I mean, I, I rarely meet people face-to-face -face anymore because people prefer us to do it over the phone or online. But the online applications, the whole entire approval process with Mike Hughes went through, that's all done paperless. There's, there's no interaction there with human contact. And then the appraisal part of it, when we get the appraisal done, um, all conventional loans, and like I said, anything that has a loan amount under 5, 10, 400, um, is on a conventional loan purchase, no matter what the down payment, um, on a conventional side, it's getting what's called a desktop review. So the appraiser doesn't have to go into the house at all. They don't even show up. They have to go there at all. So they, they, they do it all from their house. It's completely compliant, Friday and Friday. Uh, they sign off on it. And the other thing that we're coming across a lot right now is what's called a PIW, which is a property inspection waiver. What that means is the 
um, AI, if the artificial intelligence actually in your system, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, are determining what the value of that property is, and, it's, and it's, they're saying it's supported. So there's no even appraisal needed at all. So you're going to have to do an, a, a desktop or any type of appraisal. It's just it's free to the client because um, Fannie and Freddie are seeing that the value is supported in their artificial intelligence. So that's, that's one of the big things on the appraisal side. Um, we're always um, looking to make the process easier for the closing part of it. So the biggest thing that you guys deal with, I know which you're not as agents right now, going to the closings or you shouldn't be, um, we do what's called a flash close. Uh, what that means is we send 90, about 98% of our uh, documentation to the borrower the night before what they can either sign off on their phone or the computer. The government right now is making it so that you still have to ink or sign seven pages and that's all it is. So we'll have our funding there the, the next day. The client still has to go to the closing but when the client's at the uh, uh, closing, they only have to seven, sign seven documents. They're out there within 25 minutes. Yeah, so I, I know about this firsthand, right? So yep. I just uh, refinanced uh, with you, and the rates were ridiculous. Uh, they've gone up a little bit since then, but we locked in a 2.5% rate um, on a 15-year, and and we closed from our house. So I was there at the kitchen table with my wife. The gal was out in her car. She gave me the paperwork. She, she said, jump on the phone, and we, she talked through it. She didn't come in the house. And I mean, it was just, we were in and out in, in, in 20 minutes because I messed up a couple documents and <laughs> but it, it worked out really quick, you know, quickly and, and smoothless because my wife was concerned about having someone in oh, the yeah, house. Oh yeah, of course. And of course. Uh, so that worked yeah. out well. Now in regards to the appraisals for jumbo and government loans, they haven't gotten there yet. Um, they're working on it. They're just a little slower to move. Well, so there's still full blown appraisers, but my appraisers all took their COVID glasses. Um, they're showing up. And their booties, their gloves, their masks, and you know they're they're going in really safe. So I mean that's that's um, it's something that we have to do still on a jumbo and FHA loan. But no, it's just the name of the game. What we gotta do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. So we're learning about the jumbo side of things that they're not reselling those those notes, right? That paper on that they're holding. Never have, right. And because of that, they want to get their ducks in a row, more, right, with the appraisal and, and and their underwriting and everything because. There, there's higher risk, right? It's not right. picking a can down the road to somebody else's problem later. Right. So interesting, interesting. Um, all right, so any questions? Any questions for John on, um, you know, I'm sure one might be, I don't know if you have, the, what, how are rates, how are rates doing today, the 6th of, of May compare, compared to, you know, when, um, I think it was March 15th when the uh, President Trump uh, you know, named it a pandem pandemic, yeah. right? So, so a month and a half, you know, ago, what were rates kind of trending at then for a 30 year and, and got, maybe a 15 year? It got years? crazy. They got really crazy. So, you know, but before we had any money coming in from the government, Mike, it was, um, yeah, it, no one knew what was going on with mortgage backed security. So, what got scary there is mortgage backed security is obviously everything that supports the mortgage. So, people weren't buying um, because of the way it was set up. And we banks were getting what's called our margin calls. And margin calls are, you know, pretty much everyone that's a banker hedges for the most part, unless you're just true broker, but hedges. And you know, they 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 they're kind of guessing on where the rates are gonna go. Well, there are margin calls maybe because they're so unknown, some banks went under completely because of that. So smaller banks didn't have good assets went under because of that. Jeez. So that, that they got really scared for a little bit. But now that that part's calmed down because they've gotten a hold of that. But we saw rates jump up almost two percentage points in one day. Some banks weren't even offering rates. So that's calmed down. And no one really knew that in the, um, no common people knew that. Some people in the mortgage industry because they get, they took care of that literally within days. I mean, us as, as lenders were scared for a few days, but they got that handled pretty quickly. Uh, so right now in a 30-year fix, we're back down to 3.25% on a conventional loan. Um, a 20-year, 20, a 20 yeah, you got lucky. We got two and a half years, 3.125 right now. Yeah, I got it. Yep. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. 20 years ago. Wow, wow, wow. It's a nut, John, you know? 2.625. 2.625 we're at. So oh. you're, you're still better. Uh, FHA, we're at 3.125. Uh, VA, we're down to 2.75. And there's where the jumbo. They're putting a little, the little premium on this because the jumbo loans, like we talked about, consider the risk of your loans are at 3.875. Some of the investors pulled off completely, so there's not even good pricing at all because they don't want to do jumbo loans. We, we still have a very strong appetite for them, so we're being aggressive with them. So back in 2008, 2009, when it got scary, the jumbo pricing would be, it was removed completely, and then it, it, when it came back, it was two points higher. So we're not, that, we're not at that level yet. Because 
like I said, underwriting guidelines in general, we're in really good shape where we knew what we were getting when we were getting these loans. There's no unknown. Mm. Well, that's why they're not that much higher, but they definitely are putting a premium on. And what about credit scores? I thought I saw something. So, that yeah, so credit, credit scores is, that's going to be bank by bank. So, you know, last week, I think I got four loans from Chase because on a conventional loan for a purchase, they want 700 credit score with 20% down right now. And 20% down? It's insane. It's absolutely insane. For Jumbo, I believe they're at 720. We're at, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% positive of the, of the Jumbo, one, but we're at today, we could do 640 with 5% down. So, you know, that's, it just depends on the bank. You know, all banks got to file Fannie Mae and Freddie Mae's guidelines, and then all banks are going to do their due diligence to put themselves protected. So they're going to put some overlays on some of those products. Okay. For the bigger banks, they can. I mean, they can put them as high as they want because they're big. They have a lot of business coming in anyway. Uh, we're a true purchase driven uh, a company. So we're, we're, we're staying extremely aggressive. We can make sure all, the, all our, um, our programs are available for our clients. Yeah, that's good to know. Uh, talk to me about, uh, and I'm just changing up some, some images yeah. here. We have various resources for you guys. You can shoot me a note with anything. Um, uh, I got my luxury specials gear picture up right now that I'm wearing some swag. But John, talk to me about don'ts. What are some don'ts? If somebody is buying a property, uh, they're getting a mortgage, what are some things they shouldn't do just prior, i.e. buy a new car, uh, yeah. you know, something like this. T talk to me about some some pitfalls, some things that you see and, and yeah. it makes you cringe. Like, oh, I wish you yeah. would have checked with me beforehand. Right, and it's like you, you nailed it out of the car. I mean, believe it or not, and I, and I send out the stuff to the client and I let them know verbally not doing anything outside of your normal living. Like, you know, pay your bills, give you, yeah, you still want to eat, still do that, but don't open up any new credit cards. It's going to hurt your scores. Don't go buying furniture on a credit card. I mean, I, all this stuff, if I do a pre approval and then all of a sudden we have, we got to have to do another credit check right before, especially now. We're seeing if any of those debts went up. If they do, we got to explain them all. It's just more work for you. And it may take you, out of, um, take you out of being able to buy. So don't do anything crazy with credit. I had, believe it or not, a guy last year in the middle of the process buying an investment property cash, and he didn't think it was important to tell me that he bought another home. So, I mean, people do some boneheaded things once in a while. But just, I, the easiest way to do it is live life as you normally would. I mean, and, you know, pay your bills as you normally would. Just everything, everything normal and try, try not to – have any more additional expenses on a home that you do not yet own. That's right. Okay. Yeah, up until the closing, right? Because you guys are yeah. going to re-pull the credit. We'll do a and... soft pull two days before closing. Yep. Yeah. And that's a good, another good point to bring up right now because the, obviously unemployment's unfortunately so bad right now, is, um, which is a shame. But, you know, we're sure. doing we're doing verification of employment like you had mentioned what they did with you up until the day of closing, and we're getting an updated pay stub if they if they haven't given us their most recent update one, when you update one to make sure you still have a job. Believe it or not, you know, some people get desperate once in a while, and you know, I we've unfortunately had to uh, catch people on lying to us, that saying that they had jobs and they didn't. You know, it's, sure. it's a loan that obviously has to be canceled. Yeah, I mean, yeah. heck, I'm, I'm saving over $1,000 a month. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, and ridiculous. so, you know, you could see how some people are like, man, I, I need this refi to yeah. come through if they don't have any. And I, and I get it, trust me, I get it, but we're, Unfortunately, we we got right. we we really got to make sure they're still working. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, they're checking all the way up until closing. So no big purchases. You mentioned both credit score, right? So when you you put you take out a new credit card, you do these things. There's something that draw on your credit score, and then the other is the other thing is your debt to income ratio. Talk to me about yeah. Uh, for so those of you that don't know debt to income ratio, keep it simple. If you make a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, you know, net a year, uh, and and forty thousand of it goes towards you know your, your housing and and fixed expenses. That would be what John a forty. It's a forty percent debt to income ratio. So you know that you, that's one thing that and you're bringing up some good points, Mike, because that's one thing that banks definitely look at strongly. This is not the Obviously, the credit piece, but that the income ratio piece, especially now, they've tightened those up too. So, you know, jumbo wise, you can't go above a 43% debt to income ratio. And what that what the debt to income ratio means is that your everything that you are spent your back end ratio um, is everything that you that you spend monthly that's shown on your credit report. So installment loans, car loans, not utilities, but stuff that you would show on your credit report, plus your new potential housing expense divided by your gross monthly income is what gets you your, your debt to income ratio. Um, you know, I, I, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they'll let you go up to 49, which in my opinion is still too high, but they'll let you go there. 
Um, and uh, the jumbo, they're, they're going to be stuck at a 43. Um, so that's kind of how that works. And the credit piece, you know, the big thing, the way that credit works is credit availability is is very strong too. Like, you know, that's why I said, don't be maxed out on any cars and buy stuff you shouldn't because when we when we pull credit, um, the, 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 the more availability you have, you want to have at least two thirds availability if you could to keep those scores in the about strong 700 range. All right, and then you know, obviously credit history, no late payments. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Um, and then, um, you know, the, uh, the credit availability and then the um, and no inquiries. You know, if you're taking out a bunch of new inquiries, that's going to hurt your scores too. Uh -huh. So, you know, if you, all of a sudden it looks like you've you had a, a, a credit pull for a car, credit pull for a mortgage, credit, credit pull for a store credit card, another credit card, it looks like you're a mad dash for cash, that cash and that's going to plummet your credit score too. So those are things that you got to really watch out for. Good, good, good points. I have a couple questions here, um, John. Uh, I got Harry from Cabo. Any international options for areas like Cabo? Talk to me about the mortgage process. Um, obviously, uh, you're licensed in multiple states. Uh, are you I'm unfortunately not licensed in Cabo. I wish I was. I wish I was there, Harry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and me both. You and me yeah, both. I, I, I don't, I don't do life, but I, Mike, I could get back to Harry and find out some options for him. I just don't have them right now. I don't, I don't do anything out of, out of the country. Okay. Um, a good friend of mine, Paul. Uh, Paul's a great guy. I mean, this guy, uh, he used to have a website. Uh, what? Uh, I live in a van down by the river dot com. This guy looked like Chris Farley. Okay, and he used to do these amazing impressions. Um, Paul's a great guy. Um, he mentioned, you mentioned this, but our jumbo mortgage guidelines, um, tougher guidelines. Um, yeah, they, they, they're definitely more strict, um, uh, Paul. They're, you know, they're, they're going to have stronger reserve requirements, um, stronger credit requirements. So the reserve requirements is probably the biggest. Uh, credit, second, indeed, that's increment, like I mentioned, too. So they're definitely more strict. They're looking at that file more. The reserves, the least amount of reserves that you could have for a jumbo loan is six months. Most are 12. And a lot of these banks right now want to make sure that those are liquid reserves too, not just 401k. I've got, we've got investors that allow for six months. It doesn't have to be liquid, but this when you're talking to other lenders, just be known that they're going to have a stronger reserve requirement, stronger debt to income ratio requirement, stronger, stronger credit requirement. Okay. So, so the reserves, so that's another thing. So they're going to look to see you know, hey, how much liquid cash you have in a bank account that you can grab easily, not from a retirement. Right. Because, you know, if something hits the fan, the fan and you lose, you know, your job, you know, they want to make sure that th there's less risk that you're going to default on, on your payments, correct? Right. And that's why, and that's why they're, especially now, that's why they've actually tightened those up a little bit where they're making some reserves stronger because there's people that have a job now, but they, they you know, with this thing rolling up, it may, may, a little bit uglier for a little bit and they may lose it so yeah. that's why they want to make sure they got some money in the bank yeah we can talk about illinois for an hour there that's a whole nother issue yeah. uh, but uh, <laughs> um good question there talk to me a little bit about um you know working from home right so um you know you're using an office john's got an amazing office by the way uh, we've done some of our uh, lux trainings there and um you know real, really cool location um, you know, we talk about being the mayor of your city, you know, when I talk to real estate agents, John, I talk about, you know, if somebody's thinking about buying or selling, I got Mark watching from Maples. Mark's been a regular on our show, Mark, thanks for watching and your support. But, you know, if Mark's down in Naples and someone's thinking about buying or selling real, a home uh, or investment property, you know, you know, Mark wants to be in that discussion, right? So we're all about top of mind awareness. I tell real estate agents, don't think like a real estate agent, think like a marketer. I tell real estate agents, you're not in the, just in the real estate business, you're in the business of marketing your real estate business. I, like, John is one of the best marketers I know. He lives in a town Thanks. called Elmhurst, Illinois. It's about, what, 20 miles west of Chicago. It's about, the, yeah, about 12 miles, 12, 12 miles uh, uh, west of Chicago. Yeah. Only 12, huh? Yeah, yeah, 12, I, yeah. 12 miles west there. of Chicago. It's on the train line. They got a hospital there. They got a, a college. I actually coached running backs there back in 2003, Elmhurst College. And, um, you know, his mug is all over the place in a good way. Um, like literally phone chargers uh, in different uh, bars, restaurants, companies. Um, he, he's all about top of mind awareness. Talk to me. This has nothing to do with mortgages, but talk to me about, you know, 
how you discovered this? Did you have a coach? Did you have a guru? Like, how did you, because you can't go anywhere in this town. It's a, it's a great town. How many people are in the town of Allen Park? Uh, right, right under 50,000. About 50,000, um, you know, and literally, I, I guarantee you, everybody in the town of Elmhurst that, that's thinking about getting a mortgage or refinancing, they at least know John Nolden's an option. And that's really what your job is as an agent or as an entrepreneur is to be top of mind awareness. Everybody knows a real estate agent, you know, so what are you going to do to differentiate yourself, your services, the experience, um, be, and be likable? But go ahead, John, talk, talk to me a little bit about that. So yeah, I, you know, just a, a quick story. It was a buddy of mine that was um, that called me one day, and I think I may have told you this story, Mike, but I don't probably I don't know what else is heard. But one of my really good the friends out, he was a client back at the time, shot me a text, and he was at his at his buddy's house playing bags, and he shot me a text, and I took a picture of a koozie there drinking his barrel playing bags with his buddies. He's laughing, you know, whatever. And then he's driving to pick up his wife to go see a movie, and as he's driving down, he sees he takes a picture of one of my billboards. So he takes a picture of a billboard. I say that I can't get away from you. Then he gets to the movie with his wife before the movie starts. My commercial pops up before the movie starts. Takes a picture of the commercial and video. Movie's over. They're walking across the street. There's a dog bowl outside of every restaurant and bar that in town with my name in there. And Andrew Winton, the guy that works for me, put my face in the bar, which I wasn't too happy about. But <laughs> so you see, you're so getting kissed right. by dogs and maybe something else. Huh? <laughs> this guy's scaring dogs in town left and right. So then, so then he. So then he walks in, walks in, takes a picture of that thing, walks in. Um, the charging stations are little mini billboards that Mike's seen all over the place. Uh, sees, a, sees that, charges his phones, laughing his ass off. Then he gets to, he gets to, goes to get his bill. They give him a, they give him a pen. It's my pen to sign the, the, the paperwork. Goes home, gets to the Uber. Um, he's in the Uber. The guys are local. I give him all my water bottles. So he's got a general water bottle, takes a picture of that. Orders a pizza, gets a pizza delivered. It's got my sticker on the pizza box. He gets a picture of that, and he goes and wakes up in the morning all hungover to go work out. He goes and goes into the uh, goes to the gym, and there's charging stations all over the gym too. So he said there wasn't one aspect of his night, day, and morning that he could not get away from me. <laughs> so I mean, if you, it, it's just a good way people know who I am in town. I mean, yeah, and, and, you know, it took, it, that obviously took a while to create. I've been doing this for a long time, but sure. you know, it's 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 something that I I knew would be very powerful. You know, I. I don't walk around town without people knowing that I do mortgages. Yeah. Be the mayor of your city. And that's a perfect example of one gentleman throughout his night and even the next morning, wherever he went. And, and I can attest. Um, so uh, you're doing a great job with that. And I, I put this slide up there. Daniel Kamen, who's a renowned psychologist and Nobel Peace Prize winner, said people would rather do business with the person they like and trust. Yeah rather than someone they don't, even if the likable person is offering a lower quality product or service at a higher price. Now, so I say do both. Be oh, likable, yeah. be trustworthy, yep. offer a, an amazing product and service, and then it's a win, win, win. Yep, yep. That's, that, yeah, do both for sure. But uh, it's definitely, you, you wanna work with your friends more, you wanna work with even somebody who has a better product. It's, it's yeah. true, really yeah. true, it's true. yeah. Now, I will say sometimes in our industry, especially if somebody's got a hardship or they're going through something or to divorce or maybe their credit isn't where they want, you know, it might be sometimes difficult to work with a friend because there might be that embarrassment like, oh, man, right. I don't want John knowing my oh, yeah. or whatever. You know? happens, yeah. But for the most part, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, so very, very, very good information there. Um, you know, talk to me about adjusting. Uh, from working from home, I, I have something called Win at Home. I'm trying to help agents and team leaders and people watching with some strategies to cope during this unprecedented time, maybe working from home like you are right now. And um, any any words of advice, maybe things? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it, you try to, you know, I, if you got a team, which it's, it's the bigger producers do, you know, make sure that you're checking in on them. Um, that's the biggest thing I got to comment on because you know they're in the same situation as you are yeah you're 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 roughing it out and getting through but they're not you you know you're the ceo of your company they're not so that you got to make sure that you're checking on them daily making sure that their their mental well-being is okay because you know it's a stressful time right now and yeah. you want to make sure they're in good shape and I, and I and i know personally some some guys are on my team are you know they're they got newborns and they're you know they're home crazy they're stuck home and they can't leave their house and they still got a full pipeline to deal with. So, so dealing with your team right now, and my thing is number one, 
you know, your, yourself, obviously, you know, making sure you keep yourself healthy, healthy, try to try to work your normal work life as you did, you know, get up the same time that you did, um, you know, get, get doing the same tasks you did, but you're doing it from home. And then obviously, I mean, I know everyone's doing it, but take a lot of walks. I mean, go, go for a run, you know, get, keep your, keep your, keep your blood going. Cause uh-huh. you know, sitting at home and not doing anything from home other than just working is not healthy either. Uh-huh. Great, great advice. Thank you. I have a question from Malim, who's on my team. Um, okay. Malim says, uh, are loans taking longer to get approved uh, and get it clear to close uh, during COVID-19? Not, great, so, great question. Great for, question. For, it's a very good question. So and how are you doing? So the, um, the first uh, part of that I talked about literally was FHA, FHA and conventional not for me anyway and this is this is i'm different than a lot of other places because they're going to tell you differently um i I could close a loan in 14 days if i needed to Um, i closed one in 10 uh last week and that's a conventional and fha loan now everything's got to be churned the power's got to be on par and the you know we gotta get that appraisal ordered quickly so that's that's the biggest thing that you know i could say for conventional and fha jumbo i would not write a jumbo contract for less than 30 days right now um, that definitely is uh, a harder underwrite, and okay. there's, there's more things that we take care of. But in VA, I'd, I'd run for 30 days too, just because that, that's being done by a VA appraiser, so we have no control of that. And he, they have up to two weeks to get out there, so that that's why I would say VA and jumbo. I'd write for 30 or 30 to 45 days. You know, all loans you should be writing for 30. But if you, like I'm getting a lot of fallout, so if you guys had any issues that had people that fell out with another bank. I can take them over and close them in two weeks if they're conventional, just so you guys know that you got that real tight line. Uh, it's good to know. And uh, yeah, you've done that, uh, you, I, you know, second opinion, right? That's one of the things yeah. I teach real estate agents all the time is, you know, when you're putting out videos and you're putting out content or you're talking to people, let them know, hey, if you need a second opinion on anything, you know, let me know. Of course, you can't solicit people's listings, but if, uh, if a seller contacts you because they're unhappy with their current situation, their current agent, um, you know, it's perfectly legal for you to pick up that call. You just can't obviously initiate that. So my point is second opinions are something that are popular not just in the lending side, but also in real estate, but talk to me about on the lending side, you, you guys have access to different programs and perhaps Chase or, or uh, you know, Bank of America or some of these other banks, yep. U.S. Bank, that, that they might not have access to. Um, so a lot of times you are picking up other business where maybe another loan officer or bank, banker or personal banker couldn't. T- talk to me about those kind of scenarios. Yeah, so the, the, the one that I get a little bit was a, uh, important one like chase for example their their credit score uh, minimum has gone up significantly so that's taken a lot of people that can't that should have been pre-approved or we or or approved with chase they're no longer uh, so taking those taking those over um so that's a, that's a, a deal where that just naturally has to happen um you know there's different i work with all the banks that are out there okay so that's what's nice i mean i have access to chase and chase all chases programs and access to Bank of America, the majority of the Bank of America's uh, programs. There's J.P. Morgan Chase Financial, which has unique jumbo products. So there's, diff- there's different types of um, areas where if they're going to one particular lender and they show them one, just one scenario, one program they could have, coming to me, I'm going to show you a few different ones, three different options, and let's figure out together my professional opinion what your comfort level is, what, 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 what program you should be going with. And I have access to all those programs to show that to you. Now, these other banks, and that's like I said in the beginning, I, when I worked at a bank, great for training, but when it comes to different types of programs, rates, and products, they're not as strong. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a great point. You know, different rates, different products, you know, having d- different, you know, arrows in your quiver, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the things I tell agents all the time is grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. And, you know, we've had some amazing guests on our show. Um, John, you've really brought a, a lot of different insights that we, quite frankly, haven't had on our podcast or the Luxury Lunch and Learn. So um, awesome. I appreciate it. What's the best way if somebody wants a second opinion or wants to yep. get in touch with you? Um, what, what's the best way to do that, John? It's my my cell phone. Obviously, like everyone around this call is your lifeline. So. I'm always on my cell. You shoot, or shoot me a text, give me a phone call, whatever works best. Um, you know, my cell number is 630-290-6251. Once again, 630-290-6251. You 
that's the best way to first year get a hold of me anytime. Uh, and my email too is, you know, my email because it is very big. Um, it's actually, I, when I'm on calls like this, I don't want to get overwhelmed. So I actually have my team managing it and set up appointments for me too. So email is also a great way to get a hold of me. And what's that, John? I'll type it's, it in right yep, here. Yep. It's J N is a Nancy O L D A N at rate.com. All right. So I have John's uh, email right here. I'll put it off to the side, put it, put it here so you guys can see. I'll make this a little bit smaller. Uh, oh, sorry. That doesn't help. But uh, John Nolden at rate.com is his email. Go ahead and shoot him any emails that you have, questions about anything. Um, some really great information today, John. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Mike. Um, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. Again, John was uh, going to be on later this month. We basically have the whole month of May uh, locked in except one date, the last week of May. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, we have all May booked up. This has been such, uh, we've gotten such great feedback that we're going to continue this through June. And post-COVID, you know, we might cut it back to two or one, uh, one day a week, but it's been such a popular series that we're going to keep it up. Next week, um, our next three guests, as I mentioned, we have John Cheplak. Uh, you're not going to want to miss John. He's got a great story. Um, he's, he's got such a great work ethic and a great mindset. Um, and so then next week we have Eric Sachs. We have Peter, and then next Friday we have uh, at Barrington um, Nasbar North Shore Barrington Association's new CEO. Uh, again, you talk about taking on a difficult position in the heart of COVID-19. That's next week. So, uh, again, for those of you that have any questions, shoot me a note. Same time, same place, and and again, don't forget for previous episodes, uh, you can just go to Facebook.com forward slash groups. Let me look to see if there's any other questions uh, on here. And before I let you go, it doesn't look like it. Uh, just like the sign behind me says, prove others wrong. Go make some uh, somebody's day today, guys. Build someone up. Uh, compliment someone. Check in on somebody. Uh, make the world a better place. Uh, we talk about likes, but we talk about love, but I'm talking about you know, raising the bar. Raising the bar for every day. Uh, and Again, the last thing I'll leave you, and I talk about this all the time, is keep politics off of social media. You're not going to win. Uh, the Michael Jordan series that's on right now called The Last Dance. This last series, he talked about the infamous quote, uh, Republicans buy sneakers too. He did not want to take place at part in a, uh, a Senate race in North Carolina and endorse a Democrat. He kept mom. <laughs> and he, he got a lot of grief because of it. But his response was, you know, he did not want to alienate people that buy Air Jordans. Right. And I'll tell you, you know, Republicans, Democrats, independents, uh, socialist uh, libertarians they get mortgages they buy and sell homes so be careful with your politics online and like Zig Ziglar once said if you hang out with nine dead broke people you're bound to be the tenth I say hang out with nine over producers people that do the most with their talent because you're bound to be the tenth um, so again John thank you for your time no problem. everybody Thanks else me, Mike. yeah Good absolutely trouble. everybody else I appreciate your time and uh, go make it a great Wednesday and we'll talk to you guys soon peace okay.